Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Theatre Club video, we're going to be tackling tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD, because the Vega 11 GPUs are reported to be entering production, and Vega 20 is going to be utilising the 7nm node. Then we'll move over to Camp Intel, specifically a slide which tells us that we may see quad-channel memory on Coffee Lake, and we're going to discuss that and whether it's a possibility. Probably not, but we'll go into that in a second. And then finally, we'll talk about perhaps the most controversial topic of the past few days, and that is that Intel's roadmaps confirm the existence of the Z370, B360, and Z390 platforms, with the latter being available in the second half of 2018. But with that said, let's start out with AMD. So as I'm sure most of you are aware, Vega 10 is currently out on store shelves, assuming you can pick it up. And according to a report from DigiTimes, the packaging specialist SPIL, that is S-P-I-L, which stands for Silicon Wear Precision Industries, are already preparing to have the next generation Vega 11 series being um, delivered to them. So for those who don't know, although global founders actually produce, you know, the actual GPU cores themselves, the actual thing that Spill do is, I guess you could say, package them all together so that they actually function. Also, according to Digi, Digi Times, excuse me, AMD's rumored Vega 20 series will be applied to supercomputers. According to the sources, AMD is likely to switch orders to TSMC rather than Global Foundries, which will use a 7nm FinFET process and a COWOS, that is C-O-W-O-S, packaging to fabricate the Vega 20 GPUs. Now, we don't know too much about Vega 20 other than it is essentially Vega 10, but refined and improved. There was a leaked roadmap which did appear online, I believe last year, and supposedly it's going to have between 150 to 300 watts of power consumption, will support PCI Generation 4, and perhaps most crucially, four stacks of HBM2 memory up to uh, 32 gigabytes at 16 to 32 gigabytes. However, the shader configuration, that is 64 compute units, still remains identical to the other Vega cards that are currently available. That was, um, let's say, oh, I don't know, Vega 64. Now, it appears that this card is aimed specifically on taking on Volta. I mean, that's the only way that you can actually interpret this. It's basically to take on high-end compute tasks. Does that mean that we're not going to see it for gaming? I don't know. I, I suspect if we do see it, it's probably going to be in the latter half of 2018 at the earliest for gaming, probably even slightly later than that. And honestly, AMD may not do that. I guess it really depends on how we see Navi integrated into the market. Okay, um, now we're going to talk to, about an Intel slide that's popped up specifically from Gigabyte Aorus. Now, this one's actually pretty interesting, and people are already talking about this on the internet, as they tend to do. So this slide, I personally believe that it is a typo. However, of course, I can't be 100% certain of that, but I'm pretty damn sure it's a typo. Basically, um, it, of course, goes through the various specifications of different motherboards, obviously different motherboards with different pricing, um, you know, Levels will have a different um, degree of connectivity, um, headers, audio connectors, you get the gist. However, one thing that was slapped across all of the motherboards, about five I believe, yeah five, um, is that it supports quad channel memory. Now of course, this could not just be indicative to Aorus, specifically these motherboards, because obviously you can't just have the motherboard support this functionality without the CPU itself. So immediately people are screaming, well, that means Coffee Lake has quad channel memory, right? Right? I don't think so. I mean, I would be happy to be proven wrong, but I don't think that they've got the pin count for that on the CPU itself for A. And for B, most of the leaks we've heard is of the CPU being dual channel. And for free, I don't think Intel would have, back in the roadmap, 
have planned to put this into the CPU, and I don't think they could have simply changed this uh, memory controller so quickly. So I think it's it's way too late for that. Also, honestly, quad channel memory for a six core processor, even in heavy multitasking, probably isn't going to make that much of a difference. I mean, yes, it's better to have it than not have it, but generally speaking, I suspect most applications, even if you were to somehow clock these processors to, let's say, 5 to 5.2 gigahertz, as an average, I'm not saying you would be able to, but let's just say you were, I suspect it still probably wouldn't really be worth putting quad-channel memory into this into this platform because it would just cost a lot of money. It would, I grant you, explain why Intel are pushing for a different platform itself, but as I've said a couple of times before, I think it's either for power distribution reasons because I don't feel it's capable currently, the 200 series that is, of running um, six cores, but more likely, and I think you can all agree that with this, we've had a um, platform which has essentially supported two different generations. That is about as far as Intel like to push things, so I don't think we're going to have a third generation. I just think they've just said, hey, this is an arbitrary figure that we've got internally. Uh, that's pretty much all you're going to get. Now, final piece of Intel news, and that is that a chart has appeared which tells us that, well, the Coffee Lake S series naming scheme is real. Um, we have the confirmation of the existence of the Z370 motherboard, no surprise there, the B360, since AMD nommed and uh, chewed up the B350 name, and finally the Z390 platforms. Now, a lot of that is nice, is in like it's confirmation of stuff we kind of guessed. However, one thing that's pissing off a lot of people is the Z390's existence, which is popping up in 2018, the second half. So there's a couple of questions which have um, immediately sprung to mind for most people. The first is that, well, what's the difference? Like, what functionality is in the you know, free, uh, the 390s in the 90s compared to the 70s. The second thing, will they exist on the market at the same time? Like, will there be almost like a segmentation in the market? So will one appear and then the other one basically just disappear? Or will we see this thing where the Z390 boards and the Z370 boards are essentially both purchasable and one is just, I guess, cheaper? Or... I guess to put it another way, one is more expensive. So it appears like what I said earlier is pretty much identical to reality. It looks like Z370 is almost just being adopted, tweaked, if you will, for Coffee Lake for the 8700K in its ilk. And of course, that's pissing people off. I mean, I did have a quick browse on Reddit and a couple of other message boards. And uh, no, I'm not a member of Reddit before anyone asks. I, I do browse it, however. And a lot of people were saying, well, that's just pissed me off because now it's like you guys are offering another platform, really? That's like, I mean, admittedly, this CPU is going to be released next month. So essentially, you're looking at, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say nine months again before another motherboard, a higher-end motherboard, is released. And yes, technically, we can make the presumption that Coffee Lake is going to work on... You know, there's going to be no different socket for Coffee Lake, I guess. But we don't know that 100%. I mean, it's pretty unlikely because I think people will probably drop kick Intel at that point. But it, it's just really confusing. And I, I, it kind of tells me that Intel just weren't 100% ready with the Coffee Lake platform. They basically are somewhat rushing this out to counter Ryzen. And that's why we're seeing the segmentation. Of course, that's just a theory on my part. I don't honestly know. It's not like I'm I'm in their marketing department with like a spy camera. It's I'm just making a presumption. With all of that said, it kind of sucks for the end customer. And I suspect some people who were probably basically sold on the coffee lake train you know they were waiting for it to pull up to the station so they could put in their order and now having second thoughts because ryzen successor ryzen 2 whatever amd end up calling this thing is also going to be released in you know the second half of 2018 however of course like always we don't really know the details of that are we going to see eight cores 16 threads but just with higher clock speeds higher clock, uh, higher clock speeds in ipc probably 
But how much higher IPC, how much higher clock speeds, if AMD can crank out with, say, another two to 400 megahertz with, let's say, oh, I don't know, 10%, 15% IPC, those additional cores, those additional threads might be enough to, to, to ward off uh, Intel. As usual, we can make predictions, but reality is often far more complex. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.